Hello dear ones, it's Alice. So, I've been thinking about this sexual repression thing uh, that I, I, I'm going to put up um, the picture that I used in a previous blog on this blog, which is about sexual repression and uh, the clairaudient plane. Uh, so some questions came up well, clairaudiently regarding what is sexual repression and uh, how is it expressed on the clairaudient plane. Okay, so first we need to look at normal daily behavior, what is socially expected of us. And uh, generally um, what I see here in America are people walking up and down the street, going about their daily adventures and in work and play and um, chores and so forth and they're all um, fully clothed even though this is sunny California here and they're they don't even meet your eye for eye contact generally although you will find that if a woman is is very good-looking that men will try to catch her eye and try to make eye con direct eye contact with her. But uh, often, she, if she looks in their direction, she'll be staring right through them. Or she will be avoiding their gaze altogether. Um, so, so what I see in the world in general, day-to-day, uh, -day, is uh, a sexual urge that is not expressed or acted out except in a home setting or a bar setting, uh, a strip joint setting. Um, so there are certain places where sexual repression is not needed. And, but in, in general in the society, the, the workaday world in particular does involve sexual repression. All right. So, on the clear audience plane, what I've been hearing is men, gazillion men, especially on Friday nights and Saturday nights here, who are in, insistently demanding of sexual attention. And by that I mean that it's a, it's a um, second chakra auditory program that repeats and repeats and repeats without any kind of change up. It's subconscious. It's repressed energy that's expressing itself uh, without the actually without them actually generally knowing what they're doing. Okay. Although as time goes on they begin to uh, to relate to it uh, on the physical plane and actually consciously hear it, okay? Now, amongst women, what I'm hearing is when the man's attention, this man that's subconsciously like daydreaming or imagining about sexuality, when his attention becomes fixed on a particular person, from a particular woman, from that woman I hear um, a response, a negative response. No, 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 oh no, oh no, oh no response. Um, but sometimes I hear a coquette response, something like, the feeling is something like this, oh, you handsome man, oh my, oh my, oh my, like that, right? Um, from women who are willing to, to respond to that kind of energy. And um, so a man can believe that he is, if he has his mind fixed on a certain object of, of sexual attention, he can believe that he is receiving that positive sexual response from that person. And even though there's a constant switcheroo and change up on the clairaudient plane, so that he may be hearing from several hundred different women or hundreds of thousands of different women, all of whom sound the same to him because of his mental filter, which is object-oriented. It's, it's, it's um, concentrated on a certain object of attention, okay? 
So, and a woman may be thinking that she's receiving um, uh, in insistent sexual invitations from a particular man or set of men during the day when in fact uh, she's maybe receiving it from 10,000 different men or 100,000 different men. Whoever has that particular um, uh, message in the repressed second chakra at that time. Okay, So it's the subconscious, the unconscious, slowly coming to consciousness through the filters of societal expectations. Now what are these societal expectations? In, mostly in middle America today, men are learn at an early age that they're expected to be ever ready for the act of sex. All right. Women, on the other hand, learn that they must not be uh, make themselves available for sex indiscriminately. So there we have a clash of societal expectations. And here we have the ascension process where uh, all feelings are made known, all subconscious programming is coming to light, and it is completely impossible to escape from other people's programming without reprogram reprogramming our own systems. So we feel trapped. We feel trapped by this clash of societal expectations. The men in their unconscious, repressed state want constant sex. And it's very obvious through the clairaudient chatter that this, this thought process, process is going on. The women in the unconscious, repressed state want to avoid it. Almost always want to avoid it unless they know who, who it is that they're talking to or think they do. Okay, so there is no like meeting of the minds there. I'm reminded of, of prostitution and sex, female sex workers, how sometimes they can go to jail, uh, even though um, it's very clearly men who want their services and men who make the laws in general, nevertheless, uh, these women who are, whose services are desired by men are sent by men to jail. Now what kind of sense does that make? Unless we consider that most of the men are married and that for the sake of, their, of appearances they don't want their wives to know that they have this, this desire, this, this constant urge. Okay, so looking at that from a far context we could say it may be possible that women want to express themselves sexually more frequently than they do and with more partners, but because of societal expectations they don't. And it may also be possible that men would like to see two different kinds of women in their life. One, the woman who keeps their genetic line straight and raises their family. Two, the woman who has no sexual inhibitions and is willing to, to mate with anyone, the sex worker, okay? Now, here we have the clairaudient plane, and, and all women are on the clairaudient plane at the same time. So the man that has an expectation of, of sex worker like gratification, will also have his wife on the line at the same time, okay? Mystified, upset, disgruntled, wondering if she should be divorced because of it, right? We really need to work on our own systems here because there's no like answer to this question until our own endocrine systems are balanced and our chakras are balanced and our inco the incoming light clarifies the distortions in our light bodies and so forth. And at that point, everything will be very clear, I think. There's a situation that's been coming up for me as a single person. And that is that, that yeah, a number of couples 
like I'd say 10 or more couples are latching on to me for this with an with the man having an expectation of the sex worker role from me because I'm single okay because of my many years of, of kundalini yoga and other meditation practices <clears throat> martial arts mental conditioning I I'm relatively <coughs> I'm relatively aware of what is going on with my energy systems. Um, I tend to look at things energetically these days rather than from the standpoint of personality um, because energy is easier for me to deal with it with a neutral mind. And I look on other people also as energy systems that, I, and I look at the balance of the energy systems of other people rather than at their personalities. And in that way, I find that I don't get so attached to uh, personalities. And, and I have a, a better time maintaining the integrity of my own energy system. So that's just some background information for you, preparatory to discussing this scenario of couples latching on to single women. Uh, it seems to me, and I will propose this hypothesis, that when the men say that they are hearing from the single woman, uh, please do, please do, please do, all day long, uh, as a response to their uh, recurrent and like constant demand of sexuality on the repressed uh, second chakra plane, what they may actually be hearing is the res repressed response of their own wives. Okay, so then when they uh, when they recognize me as the other woman w with their minds, and uh, and then um, uh, direct their like energy to me. And their wife gets upset the next thing that sometimes happens is that they say to their wives I don't want her sexual attention and I don't know why she's doing this to me I can't escape from her okay now bear in mind it's their wife's own sexuality that is creating constant lower chakra bond with them this is why people get married right but from the standpoint of the sex worker role that they think that I'm playing or that other single women are playing, I'm cast in the light of the illegal, um, of the person who is, is, is breaking a law and I'm placed in jail, as it were, by the man, right? Just like the prostitutes in America today frequently are, okay? so. In the context of Claire speak, what is happening is that the man will um, say to his wife, and this is on a very deep subconscious level, so, so I hear it sato voce, is that how you say it? I hear it very, very, very quietly if I listen very well. I hear him saying to, to his wife um, something like, you take over here, or you deal with it, or you or you woo her, that's it. My wife woo her, that's, those are the words. My wife woo her, and I hear it over and over again. And what happens then is on a very deep subconscious level, the wife begins to woo me. Why would she do such a thing? Why would she, why would she listen to him regarding that? I think it's because she wants to rediscover her own re repressed sexual drive. And the think that the man asks his wife to do that because he doesn't want to incur her wrath. It's for the same reason that there are laws against prostitution. It's a pretty complicated topic. But I do have that much to offer you that there is this going down right now. So then to continue, if during this process of wooing, uh, of, the, of the wife wooing the single person that's like the third, uh, begins to grate on everyone's nerves, and then there's a breakup, what you will find, in, and what I have found in several instances, is that the man then 
uh, woos a woman who I would call the Lilith, the, the woman who has a very strong sexual drive and relatively few inhibitions. Okay, and then for the women that, that were, that used to be the wives, what I find is uh, struggling to find uh, like a standing point in the world at large right now. Um, these women who are, who are in, in a sense set free of the societal expectations and the two societal roles of a diametrically opposed societal roles of women, these women are in a position right now to uh, to um, to step forward into the incoming light and to transform. They're amongst all the people on earth today, except for the children who are in the most, uh, the first st position of, of, a, of being able to absorb the light. These women who have been set aside and freed of societal expectations are the ones that, that are most capable of, of um, incorporating the new codons and the new encoding first. I hope that helps them some. Now, um, for the men, the men who have set aside their wives and stepped into the role of wooer of, Will, of Lilith, um, I will say that there is a great deal of sexual rage to be gone through for the both of you, you and your new wife. I think that you should be very careful uh, not to act out your rage against your sexual partner, okay? And if it looks like a rage is getting the upper hand for either you or for, for the Lilith that you married, I think that you should plan for the contingency of separate residences until the, the rage is cleared by the incoming light. So what accounts for this rage amongst the, the men and the new Lilith uh, spouses? Um, I think it has, well, there are probably many reasons, but I think one, one thing to consider is that the, the desire to act out uh, constant acts of sex or to, to dream about them causes an, a mental and emotional imbalance in a person so that they cannot fulfill their, their true soul destiny. And, and this rage that, that men feel has to do with their uh, inability or their perceived inability to deal with to deal with a sex urge um, and to restrain it with their mental minds. Um, so, so the problem there is just a, that they need to restrain it through their heart chakras, which are the center of their endocrine system. Um, so, but, but there you have what I think is the true reason for the rage in men right now. And then for the women, the Lilith, the women who are acting the part of the, of the woman always available for sex, I think that the rage there has to do with um, um, going against the societal expectations. And in fact, even though the woman is fulfilling her own like fantasy of, of sexual liberation, the, the Lilith is, nevertheless, the... the um, the negs speak from women regarding this, um, regarding this way of of acting in reality, is 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 causing uh, is causing the rage. I think so. Other women, the the opprobrium of other women is calling causing the rage in the Lilis. Specifically in this case, most likely. It'll be the, uh, the, the negativity of the displaced spouses and their social circles. That will be, that will be the burden of, of negativity for, for the Lilith. Um, and this, this kind of burden goes on despite the fact that the displaced spouse, may, female spouse, may be very spiritual and in her mental mind uh, very, very non-judgmental regarding what has taken place, and the arena, the arena for the for the neg speak that that comes to the Lilith, is not conscious. It's deeply unconscious. Okay, and it is there that the rage develops in the deep unconscious mind. So, okay. um, that's all I have for you for now. I wish you the very best in in 
in absorbing as much light as you can as soon as you possibly can because it is the light that will set us free of the suffering of this world. It is the light which will destroy the illusion of Maya and bring us into the new earth. And the, the glory that awaits us there, the wonders that await us there, and the happiness, the depth of happiness that await us there uh, are beyond imagination in this world of illusion. So, God speed you all, God rest you all, and God keep you all till next we meet.